Hello, welcome. My name is John. I'm an e-specialist here with the Jacksonville Public Library, and today we're going to be covering cover design. So let's get started. What we're going to do today is we are going to look into some design options out there. What programs do you have available to you? Some talk about some best cover sizes. Where can you find some free resources to manage all of this? And then we're going to talk a little bit about GIMP with a live demonstration. So, let's, let's talk. Software. Regardless of your genre, you're always going to need some kind of software to build your cover. And the three we're going to talk about today, this is by no means all of them, but these are the three that you're most likely to hear about. Photoshop. Photoshop, it's hard to get away from Photoshop whenever you're talking about anything graphic design oriented. Um, the problem with Photoshop is that it is expensive. It's basically at the cheap end, 20 bucks a month for life. That's not really a good price if all you're trying to do is make one cover or just one cover a year. That's a lot of money. It really piles up. So another option very powerful is Affinity Photo from Serif. Affinity Photo is a one-time cost of $50, although at the same time, about four times a year, they have a sale of $10 off, sometimes even $20 off. So really good deal there. It's almost as powerful as, a, as Photoshop, so you get a lot of tools for a little money and you can make some really amazing looking covers in this program. The one we're going to be using today is the least expensive one of the three, and it is called GIMP, which is actually short for GNU Image Manipulation Program. Um, it's this little raccoon over here with the uh, paintbrush. GIMP is 100% free. It's been free since it started, and the makers will continue making it free for as long as they can foresee. What's great about GIMP is it does have some tools that Photoshop and Affinity do not have, mainly because GIMP is made by a group of people who are passionate about the work, and there's a lot of really cool add-ons that they just have built into the system. Now, is it as robust as Photoshop or Affinity? No, but it is a really good software platform for being absolutely free. Now, let's talk about resources. Once you get your program, what kind of resources are out there to better make your cover? Well, we're going to talk about a few, not a lot today, but a few. All of these are royalty free. Royalty free is important for you as the independent author, ebook creator, because you don't want to have to spend any money down the road paying someone for the rights to use an image in the cover that made you a thousand sales. So you want to go with royalty free images. Now, you can't just go to the internet and start pulling up videos or images because you don't know what the rights are. You've got to go to a, uh, a website that has free rights. And there's a couple out there. There's Pixabay and Pexels. These are by no means the only ones out there, but these are two the, of many. We'll look at them here in a moment, but um, these are really good for free images to download and use, and you don't have to worry about royalty rights. And like I said, we'll look about it in a second. The other free resource we're going to talk about today is Font Squirrel. Font Squirrel is one of many different free font foundries out there. The important thing is you want to make sure whatever fonts you're using for your book are royalty free too, because just like someone can come after you because you used the wrong picture, they can also come after you because you've used the wrong font. And I'll show you how to know that your font that you're going to choose 
is royalty free so that you're really good and good to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to uh, the, the live so that you can see these websites that I'm talking about. So I'm going to come over here and here's Font Squirrel right off the bat. Now, notice Font, Font Squirrel has this little blue area here where it says download OTF off-site. I'm not going to click on this one because it's an off-site one, so it's not stored locally, and I'm not going to worry about that for now. So I'm actually going to come down here to some of these, and this Source Sans Pro is download OTF. That means it's here on the site. I'm going to click on it, and it takes a moment to load. And what I really am interested in is less all of this up here or down there, although this is really handy to know all the different ways the font's going to look. What I'm interested in is this license right here. And it says it's the SLIL Open Font License version 1.10. And what this allows us to do is permission is hereby granted free of charge to anyone who wants to use this. So I would make sure you double check, read through all of this before you use the font, but this is probably a good font that we can use. Now, let's look at some of those other resources I mentioned. So up here is Pexels, so I'm gonna click on it, and here's Pexels. And this is a free uh, picture location service. So I'm gonna just click type for, uh, actually, this is a good one. We'll go with fantasy because this is one I've looked recently for this class. And we can see that there are a lot of good pictures here. Now notice these first couple of ones. As I hover over, let's say this one with the, the uh, butterflies and the little mushrooms here, it actually says Pixabay. So I could, if I wanted to, go to Pixabay and get this, or I can get it through Pexels. Either way works. But I'm going to go with, for now, this one right here. I'm going to click on the image. It brings it up, and I sit, see down here, free to use. And I can come up here and choose this little down arrow and choose the size I want. Whenever you're going for stock photos, you want to make sure that they are the largest pixel size possible because you want to have more control over the image. If you go with this small 640 by 426, that is not a lot of pixels there, so you can't make it that much bigger and still have it look good. Whereas this original here at 4,793 4, by 3,194, that's a lot of pixels, means it's going to be really big on your book cover and you're going to have really nice pixel density in here. Always want to go big because big to small works, small to big does not. I'm going to click on Pixabay, and Pixabay, similar structure. These are images that we can download for free. I'm going to click on this one right here, and here's that Pixabay license, free for commercial use, no attribution required makes it very easy to know that this is an image that you can use in your book cover. And just like on uh, Pexels, you can click free download and see the different sizes. And we're going to go with, if we were to go with one, we'd go with this absolutely massive one. Now, one thing I do like about Pixabay is we can come up here to where it says photos, and there are options for vector graphics. So if I was going to say uh, leaf, there are a lot of different vector graphic options for leaves. This is good for logos or you know if you need to have some kind of repeating pattern. But we're not going to worry about vectors for today. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. Now ebook covers. What do we need to know about them? Well, first of all, make sure your cover fits your genre. Go out, look at books at the library's website. Um, 
I really recommend going to Overdrive or Access 360 because it makes it very easy to filter out the genres you don't want and you're just getting your genre. Make sure the book cover that you are making fits within that genre because you don't want a really bright and happy cover if it's ever going to be a really sad story. The only reason you would do that is if you were trying to be ironic with the cover. But most of the time, they don't do that. There is an element of, of, let's say if you're doing a horror novel, there's an element of horror within the cover design itself. So make sure it fits your genre. Another thing to consider, the size options. A lot of e-publication websites are going to want your cover in one of two ratios. Uh, 1.6 by 1, meaning for every one inch of width, you will have 1.6 inches of height. And it could be inch, it could be centimeters, it could be pixels, whatever. Now, that's ebook. If you ever want to go physical, you might want to go 1.5 to 1. So that's for every one inch you have 1.5 inches of height. Now, I have read online through some cover making sources, a lot of people who work in both physical and E will go with the 1.5 by one. Today, we're gonna go by the 1.6 by one because this is what Amazon asked for, but they'll do but either one. So that means because we're doing the 1.6 to one, our cover design today is going to be 2,560 pixels high by 1,600 wide. It's going to be a nice, tall, long cover. And we're going to set our pixels to 300 pixels per inch. What this means is that if we do want to print our book, we have plenty of pixels to work for. And if we want it for e-publication, we can, if we need to, downgrade it to 72 pixels, which is a standard size for ebooks and other digital media. You're going to see pixels a lot today. And in fact, this is probably the last time I'm really going to mention inches because I'm going to do most things in pixels. And that's because everything in the digital world handles pixels. So let's go live. Now, if you're taking this class, all through the library, then you'll get a slideshow where the slides will be here, but you're going to be following through the video. So I'm going to close this and I'm going to hop over to GIMP. So this is GIMP. Um, if you fresh download it from GIMP.org, you're going to see it's going to look a lot like this. Uh, you might have to tweak it a little, but this is what it's going to look like for the most of us. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to come up here to the File button, and I'm going to choose File, New. And I'm going to set my width to 1600 and my height to 2560, just like Amazon is wanting. We're going to keep it at pixels, and we got have it here at 300 ppi, RGB color. Now, you'll see a little bit later on, I'll talk about this. Um, if you want it to be CMYK compatible, there is a link later on that'll show you how to get CMYK through GIMP. We're not gonna worry about that for right now though. So I'm just gonna click OK. And we have our background. So here is the base layer upon which everything else is going to be built. And we can see the layers over here on the right in our layers panel and we can see background. This lets us know exactly how big our final cover is going to be. So now let's add in cover picture. So I'm going to come up here again to File, and I'm going to choose Open as Layers. By doing this, it opens it within the current file we're in. So Open as Layers, and then I'm just going to go to where I have it saved. So I've saved it to my desktop. There's my image, and I'm going to click Open. And it's going to ask me, do you want to use the embedded color profile? We're just going to keep. And here's our image. Now, notice over here on the right that our image has been added to the layer stack. And we can see it. Pexels is where I got it from. And it's right here above everything else. 
if I was to move it in the layer stack just by grabbing it and dragging it below background, we no longer see it because background is on top of it. So I'm going to put it back and we can see our forest again. Now, I went with a picture that was much larger than the available space. That's okay because we can shrink this. I'm going to come over here into my options and the one I want is the scale tool. Now, you might not see the scale tool by default, but you can always right click and see within this panel which is the right one. So I'm going to go with scale and I'm going to click on this active layer. And notice now I see the whole picture for what it, it really is worth. And I could come up here to this scale panel here and adjust it there, but I'm just going to uh, zoom out a little by holding control and rolling the mouse wheel. I'm just going to grab a corner and resize it. And I'm going to grab this corner, resize it. And then I can grab this series of squares in the center and bring it up. Okay, I made it a little too small, so I can just scale it out some. I actually want it a little bit bigger than the available space because it gives me some room to play with later on. So I'm just going to hit this. I like this. I'm going to go scale. Give it a moment. And now it is much better scaled within it. I'd like to center this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my move and align group over here. And I'm going to choose, make sure I've chosen the alignment group. And I'm going to just center this up. center that on the vertical and the horizontal so my image is fully centered here. I've got a good amount of space for the, the dark spooky forest at the bottom but I also have enough space for my title at the top. Okay, I'm going to switch this back to move because I'm probably going to need to move at some point here soon. Now it's time to add the title. And to add the title we're going to use this font box here, the text tool. And I need to make sure I set my font, so I'm going to come down here to Tool Options. I'm going to change this AA here from Arial Bold to the font I have installed, which is Harrington. It's way down here in the H's. Oop, and then I went too far. I'm not sorry, not Harrington, Harding. And then I'll draw a little box up here and type the word the. And you know what? I'm going to erase that real quick. And I'm going to make sure I just come down here to the font tools and center it. Hmm. Didn't like that. The. There we go. And now I'm going to put in, draw out a new box. This one's going to be forest, and we're going to make it bigger here in a minute. And then I'm going to draw a final box here and put author. You don't need to type by. That is an old way of doing things, and it's just no longer recommended because, honestly, people know it's going to be by you because your name is going to be on the title. So we're going to now start scaling some things because I want my word forest to be much bigger. So I'm going to click on the forest layer and then I'm just going to first close this text box up some. And then I'm going to go and activate my scale. And I'm going to scale this and make it much, much, much bigger. That's good. And I'm going to grab this and just bring it up some scale. Now forest really stands out. It's going to make it much easier to read on the bookshelf, in a thumbnail, whatever. I'm going to align this again by clicking on that element and then just lining it up. There we go. And because I had it centered in the text box, it's centered on the page. And let's go ahead and let's move, change the the and 
center it up on the page. And it was pretty close to center anyway. And we're going to click on our author layer as well and center that too, just to make sure everything is centered. And you know what? I'm going to bring this up just a bit by going into my move and dragging it up. Now I'm going to hold control and control will lock it to the ver this one axis. So when I bring it up, I don't have to worry about recentering it. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to put a little bit of color in here, just a splash of color to go in this gray field. So to do that, I'm going to create a new layer coming over here to the layers panel and hit OK. So I now have a new layer and then I'm going to come over to my select tool and choose rectangular select. This lets me put in a box right there. And now when I fill this with color, it'll only fill that area. So now to choose a color. Now, because this is a horror novel set in a forest and there's probably something bad happening in that forest, we need a little bit of color that's gonna be spooky. So I'm gonna come over here to this color select tool, this black square here on the left. And I'm gonna go with a red, uh, maybe down here reddish brown, and I'm going to come in this area. You don't want to go super saturated up here because it's going to look cartoonish unless that's what you're trying to aim for. Because we are aiming for a more realistic horror, we're going to come in here, kind of get it in this spooky grayish desaturated area. Maybe bring it a little bit further down. I'll click OK. And then I'm going to need to find my paint bucket over here. Click on paint bucket and click in my selected area. And now it's there. I'm good to go. Now all I need to do is make it look suitably spooky. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use my eraser. Now erasers and paint brushes work with the same principle. What they do is they use a stamp called a brush. The brushes in GIMP are over here. Depending on what program you're in, they might be somewhere else, but they're right here for now. Each brush is, like I said, a stamp that as you drag the stamp across the canvas, it makes lines and strokes. So I'm just going to use this kind of bristly looking one, and I'm going to zoom in a lot, again, holding control and rolling the mouse wheel. And once I get pretty close, I've got my bristles, and I can just start clicking along the edges just to kind of make it look a little bit more gruesome, a little bit more spooky. Also, it allows it to look a little bit closer to the same kind of font and stuff that we used for our title. Ah, I didn't like that, so I'm just going to undo that. Just click a little bit more in here. You want this to look kind of random so that, again, what's going on? I don't know. Maybe something's been eating at this. Okay, that's good. It's suitably spooky at this point. And I'm going to even come down and click on the background so that everything looks good. I like that. So it's time to save it. So I'm going to click on File, Save. Now, if you were doing this on your own computer, I would seriously recommend you had saved it before now. But for right now, we're good to go. I'm going to call this cover design. Always make sure you name whatever your file is, something that you'll remember, and put it somewhere that you'll remember where it's at. XCF is the native file format for, uh, for GIMP, and so that's what we're going to use. If you're not using GIMP, you will use whatever file format is appropriate for that system. So I'm going to hit save and the file is saved. Now, you won't want to send this out as is. What you want to do is convert it to a JPEG, a PNG, whatever. So to do that, we're going to click on File, Export As, and you're going to choose what you want. So I'm going to again go to Desktop, and I want this to be a JPEG. So I'll go Select File Type, and there are a lot available here in GIMP. And I'm going to come down until I find JPEG and then hit export. It's 
just gonna give it a moment and I'm gonna set this to 100% because again, you want the best quality available and then you can go down in quality as needed. So I'm gonna hit export and now it's exported. And I can go to the desktop and see my picture if I wanted to, but for right now, we're gonna jump back into the presentation And let's talk about some resources that you can do, use to do some learning at home. So lynda.com through the library is a very good source for learning. Um, these three videos, depending what program you're using, any one of them is good. The GIMP Essential Training, Photoshop 2020 Essential Training, the basics, or Affinity Photo Essential Training. Like I said, any one of these three is good, it just depends on what program you're gonna be using to, that day. DIY Book Covers is a very good website to learn about the industry of book covers and get some tips and figure out what you may or may not be doing right. And this is what I mentioned earlier, that setting GIMP for CMYK. Uh, it's actually a YouTube video, so you can type that into YouTube and you'll be able to find it. And then we have some library classes uh, that you can check out here at the Jacksonville Public Library. We have edit your ebook, publish your ebook, and free photos for your website. Uh, all three of these will help you build your web, uh, your ebook out and get photos both for your ebook and for the website that you might make for your ebook. And that's it for today's class. Thank you all for watching and stay tuned for more videos from the Jacksonville Public Library.